Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. You're the one who voted to deregulate swaps and derivatives in 2000, which contributed to the overleveraging of Lehman Brothers, which was one of the culprits that brought down the economy. No! What's wire hangers doing in this closet when I told you no wire hangers ever? (laughs) Sorry. Welcome to the Savage Nation. I love that no wire hangers opening. But I had to find the exact right moment from last night's debate, which I admit I watched because I, I was captivated. Two psychos in the same room on national television is hard to find, especially uh, moderated by uh, Rachel Madcow. I mean, it doesn't get... The theater was great. It was great theater. And to see Rachel Madcow hugging them after the debate shows you how unbiased NBC, MS, whatever it is, has become. Now, what's intriguing about Hillary's attack on Wall Street and old Bernie's charade is that Hillary Clinton has a bit of a problem in her attacks on Wall Street. And that is that her son-in-law, Mark Mesvinsky is a hedge fund operator. Now, how in the world can she attack hedge fund operators, millionaires and billionaires, when her son-in-law, Mark Mesvinsky, is the co-founder of hedge fund Eagle Vale Partners and the husband of Chelsea? I have nothing against hedge funds, by the way. If they're smart enough to make a living at it, good luck to them, because not all hedge funds make money. Incidentally, it's a risk. Hedge funds are a risk very high risk uh, type of life that I couldn't do. Ms. Vinsky was formerly an investment banker at Goldman Sachs. Again, why must we attack Goldman Sachs? Because the name Goldman says something to you? Yeah, I get it. I know how this really works. I know the undertone of it all. But you see, you have to look at the businesses that have been started as a result of the money they were able to raise through uh, investment banks. You know what the word investment bank means? It's a bank that invests in companies. Sure, they gamble, but they also invest in companies. They also do deals. So it's not as simple as you may think. This attack on Wall Street sounds good on the campaign trail if you're an old commie nut like Sanders, right? That's a standard, you know, brings the crowds down. Sanders is the equivalent of the Aedes aegyptii mosquito of the campaign. Watch out for him because he can give you, not Zika, but he can give you socialism by biting you, and you wouldn't even know what happened. Now, here's the thing about Bernie Sanders. I did watch it last night, as I said, waiting for the Madoff show to go on, part two, which was not as good as part one. I I couldn't wait for part two of Madoff to see him go to jail, which was okay, not badly done. And then the, uh, the, you know, truthfully, we all have this macabre side of us. I did want to see his son Mark hanging himself in the closet. I'm sorry. I'm not laughing at suicide, but I... I knew it happened that I wanted to see it. It was kind of like, ugh, horrible. You wouldn't wish that on anyone except Madoff. But nevertheless, yo, would you say God punished him? I don't know. The son did it exactly two years after a certain date that was significant to him and the father of the crook. But it's interesting how far ahead I am of the world of the media because I did a show yesterday that's almost prescient. What did I do it on? Didn't I say to you the economy is going to collapse again? Didn't I tell you? Yesterday, I spent the whole day, the whole day, one of my best shows of all time. I enjoyed it. Let me put it to you that way. The lines were lit for three straight hours on the Madoff thing. Were you screwed by Bernie Madoff? How much did you lose? Remember that call? The man who lost $18 million and how Bernie talked to him, and he said $18 million. I spent more than that on breakfast. You're nobody to me. That's the, that was a great call. Then I talked about the housing market collapse that was engineered Uh, to bring about Obama. I told you that two books ago in Trickle Down uh, This and Trickle Up That. I told you about it in Government Zero. But more than that, I said to you that the world economy is trapped in the same exact situation. I wake up today, and the headline is World Economy Seems Trapped in Death Spiral. Now, I got to tell you, the global economy seems trapped in a death spiral that could lead to further weaknesses in oil prices, recession, 
and a serious equity bear market. City strategists have warned. Well, I warned you about it yesterday. So that's a topic I'm going to talk about. Mosquito expert says Washington is downplaying the Zika virus threat to the U.S. Duh. No kidding. Washington is downplaying Zika? You mean we have scientists left at the NIH who like Anthony Fauci? They are politicians. They've been there longer than some diseases. Anthony Fauci has been ensconced in the NIH longer than certain illnesses. And he is a politician put there by Obama right now in order to put out the big lie. That's all. Don't worry. We have in control of it. You'll be fine. Nonsense. I know more about it than you do. And Zika is a real problem. And a mosquito expert has now come out, a real big one, dean of the National School of Tropical Medicine at the Baylor College of Medicine, Peter J. Hodes, said, he said, I think Zika will come to America, and actually I think it may be more important than the messaging we're getting out of Washington and the CDC. Good for him. That's as far as he can go, incidentally. So I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about hedge funds. I'm going to talk about Bernie Sanders. And I want to get to the Bernie Sanders for a minute. He's, he's proving to be a real threat to Hillary. I watched the debate, and I was fascinated by it. They didn't talk about the threat of ISIS, not for one second. This shows you how psychotic progressives are. All they talked about was income redistribution. One tried to up the ante on the other, how much income they would redistribute from the middle class. Because make no mistake about it, they're not touching the donors that support Hillary Clinton. I guarantee you that. They're not paying one extra cent, 1% more in, in taxes. You're getting screwed if either of them wins. But you wouldn't know that because you hate Republicans, you are raised on that fodder, and you won't vote for anyone but a so-called progressive. Progressives are liars. Just take a look at what's going on south of the border, and I mean real far south of the border. Take a look at what's going on in Venezuela, and you'll know what will happen to America if that, psycho, uh, that old psycho uh, uh, wins. So anyway, to get to him again, I don't think, well, first of all, he is posing a real threat to her for a couple of reasons. She's an out-and-out -out liar. Everything she says is disingenuous. He doesn't lie. He doesn't have to lie because he's a stone-hearted communist from the get-go. That's how he was. That's what he was raised on. He's a red diaper dopa baby. He's the poster boy for my motto, the RDDB, the red diaper dopa baby. He grew up on Seltzer and Karl Marx. He grew up on corned beef and, uh, and Lenin. You may have eaten corned beef and cabbage. He ate corned beef and Lenin uh, every Friday night. And this is who he is. He doesn't lie about it. He wants to take away what's yours and give it to the have-nots. So I say this, and I have to put it in a delicate manner. I have to ask the question rather than state the question. And the question is, in what food will they put polonium should Bernie Sanders prove to be a greater threat to Hillary Clinton than he is already? Will it be a polonium knish, a polonium gefilte fish, or a polonium salami? A polonium salami sandwich might be the one that gets him. I don't know. He's not making it to the finish line. This I can guarantee you. That I can guarantee you. It's a terrible thing to say. They're not letting him near the finish line. He's not getting there. That's the way politics works in America. If you think we're much different than Mexico or Banana Republic, you're mistaken. It's just done more quietly here than it does there. Okay? That's all. Next case. Here are some comments on, uh, and it is open mic to Mike Friday. You better give them some rock and roll so they know what they're listening to. Right now, they don't know what they're listening to. They have no idea. They hear a guy talking. They heard 30 things. It went over their head, in their head, around their head, through the ear, around the ear, on the ear, in the vestibule, out of the vestibule. It's in the portico. It's not in the brainstem yet. So what we have to do at this point is give you the phone number. Let's do it basic. Hello, everybody. This is the Savage Nation radio show. If you care to join the program, the phone number is 855 400 it is open mic to mic Friday if you care to join the show on these or any other topics. Now let's play some rock and roll Friday so they know what they are listening to. I've given them too many ideas at once. What are we getting? What are you serving up today? Somewhere beyond the sea. No, it brings back beautiful memories of Long Island, summers. Uh, all sorts of beautiful thoughts come back to me, but you're not interested in my memories. You don't want me to go back in time. I mean, I'd rather just do today, and I'll do today. So here's some stuff for today on the Savage Nation. Here is, here's some commentary on yesterday's show. Ann Chung on my Facebook page wrote this. Great show yesterday, Savage. I was going to turn you off if I heard another soundbite on the debates and the candidates, but instead you talked about Bernie Madoff in the big short movie. Huh. Mike Yuan said, Richard, Richard Dryface, LOL, that had me laughing, Savage. Chelsea Aiello said, Michael Savage, the Madoff show was great. 
Luke Murray said, great show today, Savage. I like the non-political shows. Just talk freestyle, Doc. Joe Petrungaro says, thank you for covering something other than the election on yesterday's show. I did not listen to the full three hours, Wednesday or Thursday. I was tired of hearing about the circus. Eve Morozowski says, I like your new phrase, political Ponzi scheme, a form of fraud in which belief in the success of a non-existent enterprise, what Clinton and Sanders are peddling, is fostered by the payment of quick returns to the first investors, voters, from money invested by later investors. That's what Benghazi, Hillary, and Sanders are peddling out to the low information and young and foolish voters who have no idea what socialism is. They don't look to the socialist nations to the south of the border and to the north of the U.S. And she goes on. So this is a political Ponzi scheme that we are watching. If you think Bernie Madoff was bad and belongs in prison for life 150 years, you're right. But so does the President of the United States of America because the United States economy is the greatest Ponzi scheme ever invented. How do you think Obama affords to buy off legions of voters, generations of bums who do nothing day and night, but sit around and complain about America? How do you think they survive? On what are they living? They're living on a Ponzi scheme. He's giving them a bountiful amount of money every day in one form or another, whether it be in food stamps, welfare. I don't, I don't know how many different medical, excuse me, how many different federal programs there are feeding these people who are out there complaining about America, but they are the first tier in the Ponzi scheme. And who is sending, uh, funneling the money? Bernie Madoff Obama. Bernie Obama is doing it. Now, having set the stage for the show from mosquitoes to Barack Obama, from Diseases Without Borders, my new book, which will be out next week, incidentally. It's a small book. It's like two ninety nine. I didn't do it to get rich. I did it to get the American people asking questions about the Zika virus and what they can do about it to stimulate their immune system. Because for years I've talked about health issues. I've never done a health book. I don't think I haven't since I've been in radio. That's what I used to do before I was in radio. But I decided to take all of my knowledge, all of my wisdom, and the newer knowledge and newer wisdom and put it together in a small sort of pamphlet in Diseases Without Borders. And it just ties in beautifully with uh, uh, the Zika virus. Phone number 855-407-282. I would like to focus primarily, if you don't mind, on the housing crisis for a moment. Did you lose a house during the housing crisis? What happened to you? I would also like to go back to the crook of all crooks, Blaney Madoff, who's in a federal prison somewhere in North Carolina, I believe. And we're going to talk about that. Were you robbed by Bernie Madoff or one of his minions? I thought that was a great show yesterday. The world economy is in a death spiral. We'll talk about that. I'll play the trailer from Madoff Part 2. We'll do Open Mic to Micah Friday. We'll do a, a couple of this and a couple of that, and I'll be back. Oh, and I like to play. I still would like to play. So uh, someone writes this, Del Shiro, one of my Facebook followers, writes, it's a political zoo out there in Washington with the enemy within practicing trickle-down tyranny in the White House that will eventually lead to a countdown to Mecca in a time for war because of psychological nudity against this government zero that had trickle up poverty simply because liberalism is a mental disorder. <laughs> I guess he's read all of my books. That, kudos to you, Mr. Shiro, for putting it all, all together. Yes, indeed, a polonium salami or a polonium knish, Bernie. Be careful where you uh, eat, my friend, and uh, be careful where they take you to dinner to congratulate you on your rising status in the Democrat Party because you ain't making it to the finish line. I hope you do. That's all. I hope you do, but I doubt it. Ted Cruz. Are we allowed to talk about him? Oh, the fanatics just got jumpy. So he has a net worth of about two and a half to three and a half million dollars. That doesn't make him poor. Uh, I understand there's a little connection to uh, one of the investment banks, even though he's a purist. It's a politician. What do you people have such faith in politics?